All right, guys. So this is actually a video, a fan fiction idea that was voted on by everyone over on my Patreon. And as always, if you'd like to have a Patreon request done or just be part of the Patreon videos, just hit the link below. Head on over to my Patreon where you guys can start sending me videos for um, start sending me either requests if you hit the fourth tier or if you guys just hit the first tier, you guys can just uh, vote on polls and whatnot for uh, videos. Um, so, yeah. This was uh, one that was voted back. Uh, a, this one was voted back a while ago, and yeah, <laughs> this was one that absolutely just dominated everything else. So I uh, so I basically did a poll talking about like what um, another AU story, and this one won fifty percent of the vote, while all the others just kind of shrank. There was a Marvel universe, there was a DC universe, there was a pirate, there was a Viking, and a Stone Age. And this one beat out all the others, uh, and that is obviously Western, which I was kind of surprised. I was kind of thinking that either the Marvel or DC one was going to win, or even the Viking one. Those were my uh, top picks for winners. Anyway, so, um, we're going to talk about uh, this Western AU. So yeah, let's get started. Now, a lot of the inspiration comes from... Uh, one, my, one of my favorite movies and probably my favorite West, well one of my two favorite westerns uh, The Magnificent Seven the original so this basically sets off in the uh, little western town of Norrisville where um, a ruthless business tycoon who's hired a bunch of lone gunmen and has his own little mercenary army trying to drive everyone out of the town and of course it's Hannibal McFist who's trying his best to drive everyone out of the town so he can buy the land and build a new a new town over it and also take over the mo the uh, silver mine that's not too far away. So obviously the uh, townsfolk are obviously getting tired of getting, you know, bullied and whatnot. And since they can't depend on the sheriff who has just been a useless uh, a useless piece of shit, it's decided that they should go out and f uh, go out into the world and find new uh, like a new like someone new to help them like new allies to help them and so this leads to uh heidi who is the big voice for all of this and her brother howard to go out into the you know into the town uh, you know into the world into the wide world and go look for help and uh, yeah and they're like yeah we'll go bring you know we can go get help we could you know we can find somebody right you know, we'll hire them if we have to. We have to hire if we have to hire gunmen. That's exactly what we'll do. So Howard and Heidi go off into an, into um, a little bit of a reference here. We're gonna go a, a little bit of reference to another series, which is Red Dead Redemption. They go to the town of Armadillo, and the town of Armadillo is just they're like, oof, this is uh, rough by even our standards. Where they come across, they hear the saloon, they hear gunshots in the saloon, and two guys walk out, and one of them is a guy dressed in black, and that's Randy, uh, being Randy Cunningham, and he's de and he just got into a card fight, uh, a fight over car a card game where he was called a cheat, and he's like, "Come on, cl come on, man, you know, you know, you know how this is going to end." He's like, the other guy's like, "You son of a bitch!" and tries to draw for his gun. He gets shot in the head, and down he goes. <laughs> And Heidi's like, I want to talk to him. And Howard's like, I I want to go somewhere else. <laughs> so they end up trying to get get his they get Randy's attention, and he's just like, Look, I do the bounty hunting business. I'm a bounty hunter by trade. That guy I just shot, he just got he just pissed me off. I am no I am no hired gun for whatever you want to do. And yeah. Money's good, but I, but I don't you know I'm not gonna, gonna throw my life away for shit like that. And immediately Heidi goes, you know, you gotta help us. The, Hannibal McFist is driving our, you know, she he's killing all of us. He's killing our people, and he's like Hannibal McFist, huh? Uh huh. Did you say Hannibal McFist? I'll take the job. Yeah, this is taking a little bit of the remake, too, which is not bad. The Anton Fuqua remake is not bad, so we're taking a little bit of inspiration from that. Um, but Randy's like, look, I'm going to need help. Like, we're going to need, you know, a couple more hands in order to, you know, if we're going to save your town, you know, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna need more people. And they're like, well, and he's like, do you have anybody else? We have you. 
And Randy's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I will go look for people. And I might know some. I might know two people. Those two people are known as the Pines Twins, who the Pines Twins in here are basically like Frank and Jesse James, where they're a couple of, um, ban- of thieves. They're a couple of thieves and, um... Uh, yeah, there are a couple of thieves and cattle rustlers and bank robbers. <laughs> so he goes looking for them, and they're and they're just like they're they're already like getting away with out of uh, the bank. And he's like he hears like gunshots in the nearby bank, and he's like, huh? Didn't have to take too long to find them. And they run out of town, and Randy follows them. He's like, hey, Mason and Mabel Pines, and, and they just draw their guns, and they're like, shit, Randy, what's up, man? Could have shot your ass. What do you got? And he's like, uh, I got some, you know, I got some uh, pro bono work for you guys. Um, you think you can, ha- you know, you think you can help me out? And he's like, and they're like, what kind of pro bono business? And he's like, the kind where it's legit business and also you get to kill a lot of people. And they're like, okay, we're in. So now we got our, our three. Now we're moving on to the next. And the next one is where Randy goes back to the saloon and... And he sees someone in the back playing cards, and he's like, that better not be who I think it is. And he's like, and yeah, the person in the back is Pen Zero. And Pen in here is a gun, is a, uh, he's known as the Dandy, who is this fast drawing, you know, he's kind of like a a mix of Doc Holliday and Johnny, yeah, he's more like Johnny Ringo from Tombstone. And he's just, fast on the draw like he just whips that gun out and just shoots the guy he's playing cards with and he's like looks like you got the dead man's hand brother and that's when randy comes up he's like well i never thought i'd see the day where i'd meet the dandy and he's like oh you must be the man in black looking for a job and he's like how'd you know he's like i just you just got that look whatever it is i'll take it so pen joins the group next up we have marco who marco in here Randy finds him um, in the midst of, like, a knife fight with someone else, and Marco kills him, and he's like, I didn't just leave, you know, I didn't leave fucking San Lorenzo for this bullshit, you know, he just fucking guts the uh, one guy, and he's like, what do you want, white boy? (laughs) And Randy's like, you were Marco Diaz, you know, famous bandito and freedom fighter in Mexico. He's like, yeah, freedom fighter. I got my ass thrown out of my country after, you know, I helped um, prop up a dictator. What what do you want me to do? And he's like, how would you you like to fight another dictatorship? And that's how they get Marco. So now we have five members of the... We got, uh, yeah, five members. The next one on the list... Um... The next one on the uh, the list is um, is Anne, and Anne is actually like Randy finds her like um, testing out, you know, basically pulling out a gun, just drawing so fast he could barely see it, and firing it at a bunch of uh, gl- bottles in such a rapid pace. He was like, "Holy shit, I've got to get her on my side," uh, and they're like, "But she's a woman," and he's like, "It don't matter." Can she use a gun? And they're like, yeah, then she's in. Um, so Anne joins. And finally, our last member of this little group um, is... And Randy goes, there's one person I think I might know. There's one person, and I hope she's still alive. But uh, he has to ride all the way to Mexico to go find her. And that is Ida. Ida is a, it was a actually Randy's adopted mother and also taught him how to shoot um and now and she was also like a fat like a like a shit she was also like a female bounty hunter and has basically just been kind of like a lot like if you've played red dead redemption one she's like the landon ricketts of this story um and now she's been teaching Luz how to shoot like now she has uh she's teaching at Luz how to shoot and he, when he when she sees randy he's like ah oh, my boy and that's when the when everyone finds out like the story behind what happened between Randy and Hannibal. It turns out that that Randy's parents worked for um, McFist Railroad Company. However, due to uh, you know McFist being such a shitty human being, he was um, the Cunningham. You know, Randy's father 
kind of led a like a tried to get them unionized, but McFist was like, no, nah, that's not gonna happen, and went to their house and had them all killed, had his par- both of his parents killed, and the house was set on fire. Randy barely escaped. He still has the burns on his body from that, you know, uh, from that attack. And if he ran far. He ran far away and ran into Ida um, by chance. Who and then she raised him from there. So Ida agrees to join, and the seven of them ride off back to Norrisville. Um, where from there they run into. Um, <laughs> they basically run into the guy who's like the field general for McFist's little group. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, Toffee is the field general for this uh, band of miscreants. And yeah. Um, so the team, ba- the, the group has to like shoot their way in. And it's also revealed that Marco and Toffee have a bit of uh, history. Turns out that that Toffee was a part of that revolution that Marco was a part of, and actually helped get the guy who turned out to be the dictate the new dictator um, for the country. Instead of like you know he was there because he like Toffee was there because he was like yeah they needed a actual leader, not you who was like an idealist. They needed a firm str- hand to guide them. And he's like. So you traded one dictatorship for another. He's like, well, at least this one was more comfortable. And the two get into a draw, and and, Mar- and Marco just blows Toffee away in just like a quick draw. This is about the time where he meets Star, who has been like a, one of the, <clears throat> shall we say, working girls along with Sashi. And Sashi's been taking care of the brothel after the last mistress got shot for um, not keeping up with the money. So that's when <laughs> when Randy meets Sashi, who is all like she is all about having um, the samurai kind of code to her, and he's like, "I don't know, I don't care what it takes, I don't care what I have to do, I am going to bed that woman." And, and Dipper's like, "You got issues, dude." <laughs> um, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So eventually it does come down to one final, you know, shootout between the two, and Randy actually has to, like, shoot his way at, through at, through mountains of people to get to McFist, and McFist is like, I don't know who you are, boy, but I'm gonna make sure you die screaming. And he's like, like you did my parents, and, and he's like, who are you? And he's like, you remember, does the name Cunningham mean anything to you? And he's like, Cunningham? And that's when Randy just grabs his, his handgun his, his six-shooter jams it down McFist's throat and just starts shooting repeatedly as McFist drawed his gu- drew his gun and shoots him in the stomach. And, yeah, both die. By the end of it, um, only Marco, Penn, and Anne are the only survivors of this just hor- of this bloody shootout. And, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so there you go, guys. That is my uh, Western AU. Figured, you know, Magnificent Seven would be a nice little draw because that's how it goes. Because, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a, it's always a pretty good standard. It's always a good, pretty good standard Western, you know, story on a whole. So yeah, <laughs> I really do hope you guys enjoyed it, and thank you all for voting for this video. This was a lot of fun. I'm sorry it took so long for it to come out, but. I was busy and all the other stuff. So yeah, once again, if you'd like to join my Patreon, just hit the link below, head on over there. And like I said, if you hit the fourth tier, you guys can send me videos to do here on YouTube. Anyway, so once again, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time with Multiverse.